What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit, bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or... Check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Back on the Boss Man Show here with a living legend, Coach Kelvin Sampson, the Houston Cougars here with me on the Boss Man Show. Coach, how things down in H-Town today, man? H-Town is on the verge of uh, uh, getting hot. You know how it is in Hotlanta? Yes, sir. Where, uh, H-Town ain't taking a backseat to nobody when it comes to hot. <laughs> I hear that, Coach. Hey, Coach, I, mean, I was looking at, at, at the stats here, man. You're heading to your 10th year, man. And, you know, it's business that we both love and enjoy. Basketball is crazy. And to be somewhere going into a 10th year, talk about longevity and what this meant to you and your family. And this program is a business where they change sometimes after one, two years that a new coach comes in. Well, when I left the NBA to come over here, um, I, I, I thought this, this um, university, uh, the basketball program, had a lot of potential, um, but I want, I, I really wanted to make it a, uh, a, a family venture. Uh, my, my, uh, my son had just gotten fired at uh, Appalachian State. Uh, my daughter was, was in a job that she didn't really enjoy. Uh, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I think we're gonna take this job, but there was a nepotism law that we had to negotiate and get around. But once once they gave me the thumbs up that I could hire uh, Kellen and Lauren, uh, we just jumped in with two feet. Now we just finished our 10th year. And so, you know, I go back to uh, April of 2014 to now May of uh, 2024. It's just been a wonderful journey, you know, and anytime you accomplish anything, uh, there's so many people involved. Um, you know, I've got a ladder here in my office that we use when we cut nets down, and I think that ladder represents all the people that have their hands um, hands involved in cutting the net down. Academic people, your trainers, managers, administrators, 
Um, you know, sometimes the coach gets way too much credit because um, I think our success here has a lot to do with our staff. My staff is full of former players. Uh, my starting backcourt on the 2002 Final Four team at Oklahoma, Hollis Price and Qantas White, uh, they've been invaluable uh, in our success. Uh, Casey Beard, who's been with me for 10 years. So uh, I think our secret sauce has been able to keep our staff together. And um, so many so many people that have um, uh, not said no, you know, a allowed us to strive for greatness and and, and try to get this program at, at, at the level we have has, has very much been a joint venture. And coach, it's very much a blessing to have your son and daughter with you and your wife there with you and how important family is to you. And I expect, first one to me, coach, I'm a four-year-old son who I'm trying to show the ropes now. So it's important to me to have my son see me do radio, be covering the Hawks, the Falcons, the Braves. So talk about that piece a little more, coach. How about the family piece of it, having your son and daughter there with you, helping you success and your wife supporting you and how having a wife that really supports you through thick and thin is very important when you're a coach when at the high level like, like you are. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen without uh, a supportive wife, um, a wife that is a, uh, comfortable in her own skin because she's had to share her, you know, she's had to share her husband with uh, so many people. You know, every time we go out in public or, um, you know, all the hours that she spends alone because we're, we're practicing our teams, um, but so at this point in my career, um, I think that's one of the things I enjoy most is coming to work every day and knowing that I can walk down one hallway and see my son, Kellen. I walk down another hallway and see my daughter, Lauren, um, and look over two, two doors down and see uh, kids that I recruited and coached, um, kids that I've worked with um, that are all committed to this program, you know, and it's 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 been a godsend, you know. I've I've been very blessed to have people that uh, are committed to helping these kids. You know, one one of the things I, you know, I don't give uh, advice a lot unless it's asked. But um, I think it's really important for young coaches to never forget why they chose to get into coaching to begin with. Don't don't let don't let outside things in, influence your why. You know, um, my dad was a high school coach during segregation in North Carolina back in the 50s and 60s. And that's when I was uh, growing up uh, in North Carolina. And um, so I, I, I remember where he started and, and I remember how I got started. And uh, he motivated me to want to help kids reach their dreams, develop them on the court, off the court, um, see them reach their potential get the most out of them, uh, see their success, uh, and then bask in their success. It's, it's always been about the players and and um, teaching and mentoring and uh, then the relationships you build with those kids uh, after they leave you. You know, some of the kids I, some of the kids I coached early in my career, are grandfathers, uh, that tells you, that tells you either that, I'm too old, or maybe I've been around too long, but uh, it's it's been a blessing to to see the players I've coached have success and and build relationships with them and stay in touch with them over the years. That's that's something that I really enjoy. And Coach Samson, when you was a player, did you envision becoming a coach while you were playing, or did it kind of come after you got to playing? Um, probably after. Uh, I was a political science major, and. Um, college and always um um the guy that i've kind of influenced me uh from afar i read an autobiography about uh thurgood marshall and um and reading about him and the things that he did uh whether it was the naacp uh, uh brown versus board of education uh, i just saw the difference he was making in people's lives and um uh, being being a sounding board or being a voice for the oppressed, that's something that really resonated with me. And I and I wanted to help other people. Um, so I majored in political science. I actually took the uh, LSAT law school 
exam, got accepted to law school. And But my mother was way smarter than I was. She pulled me in when I was, a, uh, I think, second semester of my, maybe first semester of my junior year, I went to a uh, small college in North Carolina called UNC Pembroke, uh, played basketball and baseball there. And she said, you know, one day you may want to um, teach or coach and it's not a bad idea to get a double major. So I started um, taking classes to become a uh, teacher uh, in the School of Education, had to get certified to teach. I did my student teaching. And, um, and, and back then was about the time when affirmative action started taking place in universities, uh, recruiting uh, minority students. So I, I took the LSAT with my, tw I have a twin sister, um, uh, who was in pharmacy school at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And I went up to Chapel Hill and took the uh, GRE, uh, which is the uh, entrance or, or test for grad school. Well, long story short, I wound up at Michigan State University getting a master's degree. And, uh, um, but being at Michigan State then and um, being around my father, uh, my mother, I was so lucky that my mom and dad had such a great influence on me. And I think that they influenced me to help others. You know, they, um, in the, you know, I'm from a little, little country town in North Carolina. My dad was revered. Everybody looked up to Mr. Ned. That, that was his, uh, his name was John Willie, but everybody called him Mr. Ned. And um, uh, my mother was a nurse uh, and everybody called her Miss Eva. And those those two those two were were such guiding lights uh, for me. And um, when somebody um, child was sick, they'd come to our house at all hours of the night for Mama to check her. Uh, my my dad, when practice was over, uh, back then they didn't have seat belts. You could put eight eight kid you could put eight or nine kids in a in a uh, a five seater just wow. sitting on top. But he'd take them home at night because he didn't have a right after practice and, but the impact he had on their lives. And, um, and the thing that I noticed was that ne they never forgot him. And and that was, uh, I said, you know what? It, that's amazing. The impact he's had on this community and these kids in this community and these parents and, and, um, a couple bad with Thurgood Marshall. Uh, I, I knew I was, I knew I wanted to be a servant. I, I knew I wanted to serve, serve others and, and so I, I, I used that as a platform uh, to help me. And here I am. Um, I think I've been doing this since 1980. So what's that, 44 years? 44 years later, I'm still, I'm still, still grinding, man. <laughs> yes, sir, Coach. It's funny you say, because my dad was a, a high school coach as well, and my mother was a counselor. So, And I got my MPA, Coach. I took the GRE, too. Yeah, my MPA. So we have some similar backgrounds here, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 my, my my mother and father being helpful and being servant of others that kind of always ready to show I have coached last 15, 15 years coach I am about helping people put their programs out there and be about relationships not transactional but relationships and really showing support and love of everybody because I want people to succeed right. and, and do well so got that from my parents who grew up in a time in Atlanta coach where they couldn't they couldn't cross Northside Drive after dark that's how old my parents right. are so. Yeah. Having yeah. older parents in, the, in their eighties, yeah. uh, that kind of was passed down to me was almost forty now. Yeah, no, that's right. I was, um, but you know, when you grow up in the South, and the I, I was born in nineteen fifty five. Um, when you think of, uh, I think the Brown versus Board of Education, um, the most transformative um, uh, court case in the history of uh, minority people it was um, 1954. Um, so gr growing up, growing up then, um, you know, people says, well, what was it like? It, it was, it was great. Um, my, my mom and daddy loved me. Um, the, the community I grew up uh, loved me. They loved everybody. We, they helped raise each other. Um, I knew what racism was. I worked at tobacco markets in North Carolina, and there's three different bathrooms, white, colored, and other. I saw all that stuff, uh, but uh, I never, I never let it uh, define me. 
Uh, and I know, but I always knew people had it way worse than I did. Yes, sir. You know, so I, I never, I was taught to never make things about you. You know, to, you know, when you live in a, when you grow up in a big family, you understand how to share, and that uh, um, there ain't no, there ain't no entitlement people in big families. You know, sometimes if you're an only child, you you get distorted about your place in life. But when you're, you come from three, four, five kids, you realize real quick, it's uh, there's one bedroom and two bunk beds, and uh, it's is in one bathroom you you figure out real quick that things things don't revolve around you all the time <laughs> yes sir you got that right you know my mom was one of six and my dad was one of 13 and yeah. i'm one of four so i yeah. totally understand that's right i was one of four too i had three i had three sisters and they all went on and do, did good things and i'm proud i'm proud of all of them yes sir and coach i'm asking this coach um for a young man who wants to be a part of your program, what, what do you look for in their character traits that really stand out to you off the court for them to be a part of your program on the court? You know, there's a lot of kids that um, love to play basketball. Yes, sir. But they don't love to work at it. Um, I like kids that eat it, breathe it, and sleep it. And, and sometimes those are not things that you can touch or feel, but you've got to see it. Um, so... Uh, when we're recruiting a young man, uh, I evaluate him before I recruit him. I want to see if that's a kid that can can make it in 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 our environment. You know, uh, I coach our kids hard. I love them hard too, but I coach them hard. And if you don't love to work, you're probably not going to make it here. You know, uh, I think we've been in the ten seasons we've been here. I think we've had in our top 10 players every year for 10 years, we've had three kids transfer in 10 years, which means we've done a pretty good job evaluating kids that uh, can make it here. Um, um, and I, uh, the other thing I, uh, we look for is um, kids that are unselfish, um, that, that have dreams and goals, you know, not this year's team, last year's team. We had the number eight pick in the draft. Jairus Walker went to Pacers. We had the number 25 pick in the draft. Marcus Sasser, who went to, went to the Pistons. Um, and then we've had, uh, I think we had seven kids play in the NBA this year. And I now when I think back to all their journeys, when we first evaluated them, contacted them, recruited them, got to know them, and then their journey through here, and then... Uh, uh, whether they got drafted or signed as signed as free agents and then made it to the NBA, every one of those kids is part of our family. Um, whether you make it to the NBA NBA or not, we got kids playing a uh, bunch of kids playing overseas. I'm proud of all of them, and they're all part of our family. And I want kids that I coach or kids that I recruit. Um, once once you sign with us. You sign with us for life. This ain't no two year deal. This ain't no four year deal. This is a lifetime. That's a lifetime contract. You just you you you've been with us, and that's where my wife comes in, my son comes in, my daughter. You know, a lot of programs preach family, but we live family. We family every day here. And once you sign with the University of Houston, you family man. And I'm not talking about uh, while you while you're playing here. I'm talking about uh, until death. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes us unique is that um, our kids play for each other and that's and that's helped helped our success um, uh, along the way. No doubt coaching and some I love watching your team play because uh, your team is always engaged defensively. you know they're locked in on the end of the floor you you demand that they defend like crazy and share the ball and run the right actions. Talk about just that just the detail of your team defensively. And how you work that, you drill that into them. Those young men on the yeah. court, they carry themselves with, with with a different kind of mindset. Like every day, we we were fully about this life of basketball with, with the right 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 mentality to win games, have a winning mindset. No, that's a that's a great question, boss man. I've, um, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, every team's going to be known for something. The good thing about that is you get to choose it. Um, I think because I started, I played at an NAI school. My first head coaching job was at an NAI school. You used to doing more with less. Um, 
and and that stayed and that stayed with me. You know, I was a head coach at Washington State University when I was 31 years old, and we'd go down to Southern California and play UCLA, USC. We'd go out and play Arizona, Arizona State, Cal, Stanford. Um, and those coaches were all older, more established, smarter, better. They had everything. They were everything that I wasn't. Um, uh, but I had to figure out how to compete with them. And I realized that we, were, we weren't going out – I wasn't going to be able to recruit kids that could outscore them. So I figured out that we had to recruit kids that were, that was willing to not just play hard, but compete. And there's a difference in playing hard and competing. And and that's what defines the defense that's been in the floor. You know, any coach can come up with a scheme. You know, how, how do you defend pick and rolls, middle pick and rolls, side pick and rolls? How do you defend the low post? How, how do you screen or how do you defend cross screens or pin downs or back screens or diagonal screens? How do you, how, where does your help come from uh, on penetration? Who helps the helper? You know, all those things can be taught, but what's most important is the effort that's required to do that. The, the extra mile. That's why I, I, I don't ever try to be the smartest guy. Sometimes the smartest guy uh, uh, in the room uh, has a period at the end of his team. You know, our, our team has a comma at the end in that um, um, we may get beat. Um, you know, we've, we've had our butt beat here uh, enough. But when you look at the overall uh, landscape of our 10 years here, uh, we have an identity. You know, you just you just proved exactly what it, what it is we try to get to. We want to be known for something, how hard we play, how hard we compete, uh, um, an unselfish team that plays for each other. Uh, first one on the floor after a loose ball, just don't get on the floor, get, go get the ball, you know, um, rebounding, um, second, third shots. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways to win the game. Uh, and when you can master winning on nights when the ball doesn't go in, it gives you a better chance to be successful. And we've had uh, – my staff does an awesome job with that every day in practice. Our, our kids do a, a great job of buying into the things that we sell. Um, and we make this a we, we, us, us program. Um, I've noticed that uh, coaches that use the word I and me uh, a lot – uh, kind of separate themselves from their teams. But our our success is is very uh, us and we driven. We, we we have a togetherness with everybody uh, and on on our staff. Um, uh, we're very unselfish. Um, and and my my father's lessons resonate with me. Uh, he he told me three things when I first became a head coach. Number one is when you lose, make sure you take the bl blame. And when you win, give the players the credit. Uh, that's really helped me over the years. Uh, number number two, don't ever lose sight of the fact that parents had rather their son or daughter make the all-conference team than your team win the conference championship. And number three, if you start listening to those people sitting up there behind you, pretty soon you'll be sitting with them. So those three things has really helped me over the years. And coach, last one for you, coach. This coach, uh, for you, coach. When you're not coaching this team hard as you can, like how, how do you away from the game and just kind of de de decompress and enjoy you for you and not have to worry about basketball? Like, like what do you things you do with, in in your spare time that you that you have in this new calendar we have of NIL transfer yeah. portal? You know what I you know what I love to do? I love to play with my grandkids. Yes, sir. <laughs> I do. I love to play hide and seek. I like to play hide the stuffies. I like to play uh, uh, get outside and get on the scooters and go around the block with them, um, chase them. Be, uh, you know, they call me Papa and they say, Papa, can you come be the monster? So I go out there, ah, be the monster and chase them around. They'll go hide. And, um, you know, sometimes my granddaughter, Macy, wants me to come play with her in her room and then. My grandson, Kylan, who's Macy's six, Kylan's three, he comes busting in there and tears everything up and uh, building forts with pillows and blankets. Uh, we run the gamut, man. I, 
my my free time if i get free time uh now the problem is as they get older they go to school yes sir <laughs> I can't go see them anytime I want like I used to, but uh, I love my grandkids. Uh, I love spending time with them. And that's, that's uh, as I've gotten uh, older and become an old man, I guess, uh, I realized that um, uh, I wish I'd had, I wish I'd had more kids so I could have more grandkids. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Coach Sam, since it's a pleasure to talk to you today, man, I've always been a fan of yours for many years. It's always an honor to talk to you and hope to see you on the road here. I'll be at Peace Jam. I'll be at Rock Hill. And I'll be at Lake Point. Hope I see you on the road here recruiting. Yeah. And I hope to come down to Houston and see you as well, Coach, as well, man. Well, I'll be at Lake Point at some point, uh, boss man. Make sure you come up and introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you. Sounds good, Coach. I will do it. I appreciate you doing this today, Coach. It was fun. Okay. Take, take care, brother. Thanks, Coach. All right, man. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. Well, the game starts. What's up, family? Jared, the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.